it up, fellas. So everybody out there in Stickman land. Yes, sir. This is Reggie Kimball, a.k.a. Stickman number one, coming to you from Truly Cigars off of Sandy Plains in Marietta, Georgia. And you know what we're here to do. Puff, step, chat, repeat. Hey, so if you're watching this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and make sure you hit that little notification bell to make sure it reminds you whenever we release uh, one of our episodes. So again, Reggie, stick man number one. I'm here today with the fellas, all right? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I got Malcolm to my right and Sean, stick man simp, over there in yes, the far right corner. Wearing a stickman shirt. Malcolm is so special. He said, I ain't wearing no fucking stickman shirt. But that's all good. <laughs> no, mine like, was in the dirty clothes, man. Wow. Was, uh, <laughs> he threw that shit away, really. He just don't want to say it. And um, today, man, we're just going to kick back and we're going to do a little puff, sip, chat, repeat. And I said about a year ago when I started the stickman concept, and thank you for everybody who's been following us and keeping up with us. When I started this thing, man, it was because of these two guys to my right. We sat around. And before it was a thing, the whole puff, sip, chat, repeat was what we did mm -hmm. as much as often as we possibly could. <laughs> Am I right? Yes, we did. <laughs> uh, and so I said, damn, you know, I want to do something. Let's how do I turn a hobby into a business? <laughs> exactly. Right. right and right. it just started floating out. The idea. Well, I can't talk today. I started floating the idea out there. And these guys gave me feedback, said yes, no, yes, no. And I just, you know, action. You just got to get out there and start mm -hmm. doing it. So exactly. I started right. doing it. Yep. I don't even want to talk about my early podcast. I think they fucked up compared to what we do now. <laughs> I think we've done so much better. Uh, but hey, thank you, everybody, for checking us out. But today, I get to take it back to where it all started. Malcolm and Sean on the Stickman Podcast. Fellas, I'm so glad y'all here. How y'all doing on this Saturday afternoon, <laughs> Saturday morning, whatever time it is? <laughs> doing great, man. Doing great. Yeah, Thanks doing for having great. me, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I was excited about this. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad to be here. All right, cool. So, we from the Puff. Mm -hmm. We're going to start a Puff. We're going to sip in a second, too. We're yes. going to start with a little puffing. Right, right, so, right. So, Sean, yes. what you puffing on, bro? I am puff. I'm puffing on a Davidoff Escurial. Mm -hmm. um, medium body, great. Great cigar. I was actually holding on to this for a special occasion mm -hmm. to smoke it well, this uh, is for a, special a while, occasion, so. and that's why I brought it out. So <laughs> uh, I'm in. I'm enjoying this. Uh, I love it. I don't get the chance to smoke Davidoffs all the time, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, now that I for this occasion, I I pull this out. So did you? Did you? Out did, you <laughs> did you? Did you buy it? Or did... Okay. Uh, I'm smoking it <laughs> on. <laughs> well, shit. Well, Sean, shit. If you didn't buy it, tell me how to get the hookup on the dab it off cigar. <laughs> oh, no, go ahead. So, so not what you, what you smoke on, since he won't tell us the secret of how you get free cigars. Right, right, exactly. Uh, I have a Perdomo 20th anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, I like this particular uh, Perdomo because it's a Maduro wrap. Mm -hmm. It's a little sweet. Okay. On the. Uh, with the, uh, when you first started off. Mm -hmm. But then once you get into it, you know, you get a lot of other bold flavors and mm -hmm. everything like that. Okay. So right. that's what I'm smoking on this morning. All right, cool, cool. All right, so I see I got some fellow stick men right here that know a little bit about what they're talking about. Just a little bit. Just, Just a, a little, little bit. bit. I'm not, I'm not we, a aficionado. Yeah, <laughs> and none of us are. I tell people all the time, I really, compared to some people, I don't know shit about stuff. Right, 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 right. I can't break it down, oh but I know God. what I like. Yeah, and, exactly. And just like a blog, a blog uh, article I wrote back in the early days of Stickman, smoke what you like. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. That's what at the end of the day, smoke what you like. So today, I smoke. I'm smoking what I like. I'm smoking a, a Esteban Carrera yes. Chupacabra. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's become one of my favorites. Oh my goodness! I heard about it forever, and I was sleeping on it until about mm -hmm. two months ago. And then I tried one for the first time. Yeah, I know everybody laughing. I just tried one two months ago, but this shit was good, and yeah. now I'm hooked. I gotta have. I try to smoke a bunch of different cigars, but now I make sure I smoke one of these at least once a week. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, wow. Just because I, it's just a great they're, they're, stick. They're it great pairs sticks. almost with anything. They're great sticks. They're great sticks. So, so we puffing, and I said, I want to get with these guys, and just for, for for those who don't know, this is like the day before when you see this release. It's the day oh, before the Super Bowl. Oh Lord, here we so, go. Um, here we go. Oh, um, God. Here we go. And it's it's. it's the day before the Super Bowl, I'm in Atlanta, should be my ass down in Tampa, getting ready to kick the Chiefs' ass. But that's okay, because I'd rather be here with my boys, and they're going to witness it tomorrow when we watch the game together. So by the time 
this episode airs, we will be saying Tampa Bay Super Bowl. Wow. Champions. What a prediction. So y'all can laugh at me when y'all watch this. And, and you bet you better you better not cut this part out. <laughs> I will cut this shit. Cut, no, I will edit this no, shit no, out. No, I will edit this shit out. out. Uh-uh. Hey, podcasting team, y'all edit this out. Wow. If, 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 Tampa loses. If, if Tampa loses, y'all edit this out. I'm um, gonna keep bringing it up all the way through this podcast. So if you edit that part out, you gonna have to edit the whole thing out. <laughs> we gonna have to reshoot this. Wow. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh man. So, okay. It's also early in the day on yeah. Saturday here. So, but you know what? There's never a bad time. So typically this time of day, I'm smoking and I'm actually sipping on a little coffee. Right. And but yeah, I, don't I, have I never smoked this early. See, we tra- we changed you. Yeah, you changed me. You changed See, me. You're not yeah. a coffee guy. I right. know I, that. I'm not a coffee guy. No. I, I am. Yeah. And See, when you mentioned that on a, on a previous podcast, I was like, okay. A cigar and coffee, wow. and that's how the Cubans do it mm-hmm. down in Miami. Oh, in Mexicans, they yeah, you in the Latin, Latin community, Latin, Latin community Latin in general, community. Yeah. it is you puff a cigar mm-hmm. over coffee. You start your day with a nice, mellow, mild mm-hmm. cigar, and then you get stronger, right? As the day goes right. with your cigar, right? Right? Because you know mm-hmm. you don't smoke several a day if you mm-hmm. <laughs> if you're a true stick person. I'm not even a true stick person because I sometimes I smoke several a day, mm-hmm. but not all the time. Not all the time, right? <laughs> yeah. Not all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's early, but it's it's five o'clock Sunday. Yeah, there you go. So we're gonna sip a little bit today too. <laughs> you know, yeah. I've been waiting because most of the time when I'm smoking, I'm drinking. So yeah. I, I'm like, I'm Some, surprised you took the bottle out and just thought it up. For I said like, something's missing right now, right. And, and it's right. my scotch. Well, <laughs> uh, look, I keep looking at my glass and I keep looking at the bottle. I'm like, okay, when when does that segment come up? <laughs> Reggie, what we got here today? Um, so today, um, we are sipping on, for those who know, one of my personal favorites, and it's my personal favorite for a couple of reasons, is, is the Glenn Livet, uh 12-year single malt scotch, double oat, all right? It's a double oat, and it's one of my favorites, for those who don't know, because I, um, I, I'm a, sometimes I'm a cheap motherfucker, I ain't gonna lie, I'm cheap, um, but I also like quality at the same time. And I don't always have. Well, let's toast up. Yeah, yeah, toast to up. Yeah, sip. toast up. Thank you, thank you. Yes, to the fellas, to the, to fellas. the fellas. Yeah, to the GB posse. Mm-mm. We won't go there. We, we won't, won't go, go there. there. We won't go there. That's a whole nother episode, folks. So, there's one of, when you talk about value and quality, this particular uh, single malt scotch is one of my favorites because you can get it for about forty bucks. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and it's a you, good, it's a good sip. Great, and it's a great, very smooth, almost fruity kind of flavor. Mm. And I found that it goes well with almost any cigar. Like uh, to me, you can't mm. go wrong. Like some of the heavy pea. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you got to pick and choose. But this or some of the sweeter right. bourbons that are out there. This exactly. is so mellow and kind of in the middle yep. that you can, you can make it a early afternoon drink or after dinner drink mm-hmm. or just a drink whenever you want it drink. So, um, so check it out. So I'm going to sip on this as I'm smoking on my Chupacabra, <laughs> hanging out with Sean and uh, Mr. Bell. Yeah, I like it because it's um, it's not overly sweet. You know, you, right. you taste the hints of vanilla mm-hmm. and apricots and a little mm-hmm. apple from time to time. Mm-hmm. But it's not overly sweet like mm-hmm. some bourbons can be. That's right. You know, and it's, it's really smooth and mellow. Mm-hmm. And it's not... Too smooth, like some of the more aged scotch, That's where right, you don't, yeah. you know, you don't um, you think you're drinking water sometimes. <laughs> uh, but this one here is really good, too much of it. right? And right now, at some of the liquor stores, they have the gift set mm-hmm. with the mm-hmm. miniature of the 14 and the 15 oh, for right. like four dollars more. Okay, so you can okay. buy a regular bottle for like 39.99, uh-huh. and then you can get the one with the gift set right now for like 43. Okay. 44 bucks. Okay. And some of the liquors. It's got a little miniature. Yeah, there. they got two miniatures in there. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Same, but a different kind, right? Yeah, different kind. They're going to have it, but it's the 14 okay. and the 15 yet. Okay. All right. Yeah, man. This is one of my best, uh, uh, I guess the ones my go-tos, I say that. It's one of my oh, yeah, go-to yeah, yeah. Uh, single malts, just because I don't always want to pay $70, $80, $100 and can't always pay $70, $80, $100. Now, if any of y'all out there in the $70, $80, $100 range, Want to sponsor the stick men and send us a bottle or two? Hey, we got you. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> we will promote, promote, promote. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys actually uh, introduced me to uh, Glenn Levitt mm-hmm. um, and the, and the different the different um, the different years and everything mm-hmm. and enjoy them. It's mm-hmm. it's just a it's just a smooth drink. You're mm-hmm. sitting around on mm-hmm. a hot day, That's a right. cool day. It, it to me, yeah, it goes, it goes with everything. Rocks? 
if you throw this on some rocks, it's mm-hmm. right. It's like a cocktail. Oh, right, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a cocktail. So, yeah. and we've graduated to this because when we first started drinking scotch, oh my God. I never forget. I went over to his house. It was during football season uh-huh. one time, and we'd right. already been smoking cigars a little mm-hmm. bit, you know. He said, "Yeah, I'm, you know, trying, trying to drink the, uh, drink the scotch and everything." <laughs> so I'm like, "Okay, you know, I, you know, I drink with you. I don't care about right. drinking. <laughs> I'm not going to say the name of what he poured me, but he poured it for me. You can, and I sipped it, and it was like drinking fucking gasoline. <laughs> I was like, Reg, how the fuck? No, you drink this shit. You know that cheap ass shit." <sighs> We was drinking. I'm gonna say it. Go, okay. We was drinking Doers. Oh my Blended god! Scott. Blended Not even Scott. like the yeah. high end Doers, the lower. Cause yeah. I ain't no fuck. I didn't know shit. <laughs> so mm. no offense to Doers, cause they Doers does have oh, some okay. high end. Oh, yeah, they, 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 yeah, they do. I haven't had yeah. it yet. But with you drinking the baseline Doers, that is not a place mm. to start mm. for your Scotch experience. Like exactly. I did. Right. Exactly. So um, please don't. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> well, did you finish the glass? Oh, no, yeah. I, I, did. Did. I did. I did. I did. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't. Because so you I believe in not out. ever letting out. something go to waste, man. Yeah. I pulled don't it let, out. Don't ever let it go to waste. That's alcohol abuse. Right. But then, <laughs> but then after that, after Reg told me about, you know, scotches, um, you could at least I rub it, it on your knees. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was invited to um, a Johnny Walker mm-hmm. tasting here in Atlanta. And that was when I started learning about okay. how to drink scotch, okay. what the different flavors were mm-hmm. and how it was made and, you know, over in Scotland and things like that. Mm-hmm. And it was a whole presentation mm-hmm. from their bottom of the line to their top oh, of the line top. scotch, mm-hmm. you know. And so it was uh, it was a, a educational experience. So if you ever have a chance to go to any type of mm-hmm. tasting uh, for scotches or whiskeys or bourbons or whatever yeah. it is, mm-hmm. go to it and then you can find your entry point. I, 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 like I learned a lot from when we went to uh, that spot uh, where this particular guy had bourbon whiskey tasting. Right, right, right. Cigars right. and everything. Mm-hmm. And Jack. His name was Jack something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Jack, Jack Smith. Jack Smith. Jack yeah, Smith. Yeah, 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 yeah. Atlanta and, Metro Scotch Club. So shout out to Jack. Yeah, yep. mm-hmm. there you go. Um, Shout out to Trulies, man, that's hosting us. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my God. It. So I stand. So let me. No, we're going to start. No. Tracy Jones. Is the owner of the place that we're in right now? For those who I, I mentioned at the beginning, oh okay, this, I okay. did mention truly cigars. But let me just take I a second. I must have been this. drunk from yesterday. <laughs> yeah, you might you might not have heard me, but I said it. But I'm glad you I'm glad you brought it back up because I should have. I, I don't think I emphasized it quite enough. So for those who don't know, there's a lot of different cigar lounges in Metro Atlanta, Jupiter. Matter of fact, I done said it a million times. You guys are sick of hearing me say it. Ground Zero for Cigar Lounge Lifestyle yeah. is in Metro Atlanta. There's over 140 in county. Amazing. It's just it's still it's, growing. It's exploded, still growing. Mm-hmm. But this particular one is in Marriott off of Sandy Plains Road. Uh, Truly Cigars. The founder is Tracy Jones. Been here a little over 10 years now. Mm-hmm. Really, I mean, they're settled now. They're mm-hmm. entrenched. This is part of the community. But there's different kinds of cigar lounges, right? There's the Party kind of get your groove on, mm-hmm. night uh, nightclubish almost cigar yeah, lounges right. that are very popular. Mm-hmm. There's kind of your sports bar kind of lounges. Mm-hmm. There's kind of your swanky, you got to put your your uh, white dinner jacket on cigar yeah. lounges. Right. And then there's the old traditional, kick your feet up, man cave, yeah. home away from home. Mm-hmm. Everybody that, knows everybody who you are. Knows yeah. You, yeah. They know your name when you walk in the door. It's truly cigars mm-hmm. owned by Tracy Jones on Sandy Plains Road in Marietta. Please check them out. We're in the members' lounge. They let us uh, take it over today. And uh, please come and patronize mm-hmm. the brother. Great humidor, great selection. Yeah. And um, they don't have a full bar, but there's ways around that. So come, come, come <laughs> hang out at <laughs> Truly Cigars. Out. Come Definitely check it out. Come check it come out. Check it out. Mm-hmm. All right. Truly Cigars on Sandy Plays Road. So we talked about Glenlivet. We gave our opinion of Glenlivet. I think it's a very smooth, mellow. I don't. My taste buds suck, so I'm never going to be that guy that gives you kind of the really deep, all around, all the different little tastes and notes that you get. Right. But um, I'm going to read what they say, the professionals say. Oh, okay. Just for those who mm-hmm. are out there watching and say, is this really a good uh, single malt these guys are talking about? So I'm going to talk about the nose. You smell it. Mm-hmm. Get the little nose of it. Okay. What we should be smelling, according to the pros, is... A strong artificial sweetness, little fruit, 
pineapple, any pineapple fruit. Mm. Nobody separate fruit and pineapple. What are the pros <laughs> talking about? Now this is interesting. A little musty wood. That's the oak. That's, that's probably the oak. That oak. Okay, that's yeah. the musty okay. wood. Uh -huh. A little paper and hay. I've never drank paper, paper before, hay, but I've never smelled hay. I've, I've been, I've never been in a barn. Yeah, I've smelled hay. But I okay. jumped around in the hay. <laughs> okay, that's different. Sean. That's a different story. That's a different kind of scene. Okay, that's okay. Kind of okay. Kind of <laughs> Rolling around, jumping around is all the same shit. <laughs> all ends up with babies being made, but that's okay. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. The palate. Okay, let's talk about how it tastes. Okay, we gave our little opinion, our little unofficial opinions. Mm. Okay. This is what they say. It's thin, mm -hmm. slightly oily, faint fruit, possibly pineapple. The oak is discernible and fades into a peppery flavor. That I taste. I do. That. I do yeah, see you that. The it fades into a pe peppery, peppery flavor. flavor. I mm -hmm. definitely get that. Yeah, I see that. And then it goes into the finish. Okay, because that's what it's all about. How it goes yeah, down. Yeah, it goes finish. down. It's dry. A little bit of oak, a little bit of hay like, slightly bitter with some sweetness. The actual reviewer said they found it unpleasant. The finish. I thought the finish was fine. Yeah, the finish was fine. And, that, and, and that's the whole thing about that's everybody's you drink what taste you like. buds are that's so right. different. It's, that's right. Mm -hmm. You know, you can read you can read a review mm -hmm. and some people live and die by these reviews. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, no, I'm not going to change. Well, well, why not? Well, because this person said right. this is like, but everybody, everyone's palate is different. It's like a everyone's fingerprint. Is different. It's like a fingerprint. I, I Everybody's like it. Is different. I love it. Man, I please. love it. Yeah. You know what? If you don't like it, you can bring it to us. How about that? <laughs> yeah. I, I got a bottle at home. You know. So for about 40 bucks, this Glenn Livet, uh, single malt, double, double oak. oak is the way to go. The 12 year. 12 year. 12 year. There's, there's some other ones like Founders Reserve, which is just beneath this. And mm -hmm. obviously Glenn Living, you can go up into the hundreds of dollars a bottle. Yeah. Way outside of my budget. But for bang for the buck, money for the dollars, one of Stickman's favorite. And we're going to sit here and get a little tipsy on it right now as we puff on my Chupacabra. My man got a Perdomo. And what is that again, Sean? My dab it off, baby. Dab, dab it off. We still trying to figure out how to it. Figure out gonna be dab it off. <laughs> so uh, we puffing and sipping, and we're going to be right back, and we're going to get our little chat on. All right? Stick man number one. Peace. One second. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Stick Man Podcast here at Truly Cigars in Marietta, Georgia. Hanging out with my boys, Got it. Malcolm and Sean. Stick Man in the house. The original Stick Man right here to my right. Um, so we've been talking about a little puffing. We've been puffing on our various sticks. We've been sipping on some Glen Livet Double Oak. And um, now Still the sipping. last thing we like to do, and really what we're going to do is all about now, is oh. yes, we're going to chat and repeat. And this is this is where we just kind of break bread. And this okay. is again where it all started, right? It started with these two Negroes to my right <laughs> talking a lot of shit. Talking a lot of shit. A lot, a lot of shit. Of shit. Oh, about years. sports, stories, life, life, our fuck ups. Yeah, our yeah, successes, yeah. Our successes. Yeah. Our fuck ups. <laughs> and uh, our yeah. fuck ups. Oh, just the, just the, uh, <laughs> I mean, just the average thing that, that you know, everybody goes through. Yeah, like, yeah. It's just life. It's just yeah. life. Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. life. You know, yep. good. If if anything, you learn from it. Oh yeah, you hope, and that's why that's why we still here. Yeah, yeah, you hope you learn, learn. Mm -hmm. and we've been there for each other. Yeah, always, exactly, always. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's paramount, right there. You know, I don't that's cry, paramount. but if I were to cry, <laughs> I would do it to these two right here. Right, right. I'm, I'm a big cry, so I cry all the time. <laughs> but anyway, I've known Sean <laughs> since '91, since 1991. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, and, he he yeah. knew of me. I didn't really pay oh, attention. Oh, shit. Here we okay. go. Yeah, I didn't, let's go. Let's go. Tell, 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 didn't really tell, pay attention. Tell, tell them where y'all met and how y'all met. Well, we met at, at the great Bethune-Cookman University. Okay. All right. Yes. And um, you 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 were there. At, I you was there, there for a hot minute. For a hot minute. For a hot yeah. minute. Uh, but we and didn't. We saw his tall ass, but we didn't know him. They didn't know me. And I was already a mainstay on campus, so I wasn't really paying attention oh, to most Jesus. people anyway. Here we go. Yeah, and then go. He was out there playing football, running 4 2 speed. Right, exactly. Now, yeah. I didn't play for he the didn't school. Play, didn't play for the school. I didn't play for the school. But you, he played for the choir. <laughs> played for the choir. <laughs> so tell us about the choir football team, Sean. Okay, no, see, this is what it was. Every year, and I didn't know this, that. Uh, Bethune Cookman College Casa Corral would have mm -hmm. a music bowl against the band. Mm -hmm. 
and we would do this after the classic when uh, Bethune would play fam. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know the seriousness behind it. It was a big, it was a big to do, mm -hmm. but a lot of what most people don't realize that a lot of guys, like I was in the choir in high school, mm -hmm. but the, almost the whole tenor section and bass section played football. Mm. So when it was the day before the game, we all in our jerseys or day of the game, we're all in our jerseys. Yeah. And of course the band members are on the field marching. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know, it was just a big 11 on 11, full contact, mm. no pads. Wait, wait, y'all were hitting? They was hitting. Oh yeah. yeah. No pads. Yeah. My first, my first year I was playing in a hoodie. Um, I don't even know why. All the stuff I ran, up a, in that I ran a slant. We had a guy that uh, it was a good quarterback. Um, he pl uh, played football in college. I ran a slant. He hit me across the middle. Caught it. I'm running. My hoodie was flapping. One of those dudes grabbed my hoodie, and I pro I went just like this. Clothesline. Clothesline. Um, another play. Were you were you there to see this? I wasn't there to see that particular one, but I have seen them play mm -hmm. in the in you the uh, in there. the music bowl. Yeah. Oh hell no, man! That was and it's uh you know yeah. <laughs> a few plays later, a guy caught me with a um a forearm to to my to right up here. So this was truly some sandlot shit. Yeah, yeah. I say, oh no, it was yeah. it was real life sandlot. Was, the out of bounds was was the pole, the, the light pole to light pole. That's what I'm about. There was no don't, line. Don't run around. nobody into the pole, right. basically. Yeah, and we um. The football team would be out there watching. Wow. Um, Larry Little was out there watching us. He was talking about the time. Talent. Larry was. Little was the coach at the time. He, right? he was the, the coach, coach at the time. time. Yep. So, you know, it, um, it, it was so Larry Little. But your two speed didn't catch it. Well, though. see, the, the thing right. is, when you're cutting across the middle, okay. you know, it's, yeah, it's okay. easy for somebody to grab you. But, uh, you know, especially if I got a hoodie on mm -hmm. and they, they close lining your stuff. But I was, I was, I was, I was, uh, I was laying. I was laying some wood back. Ooh. Sean was a mini athlete. Yeah, he was a mini athlete. He was on a shorter stature of most people, but he, he still played ball. But uh, so we got to get all around athlete. But, okay, so we met in college. Yeah. yeah. So, so tell yeah. me. Yeah. And and uh, Matt, you know, I pledged Kappa, uh, uh, spring '88, Gamma Theta, and uh, I guess this this young guy was interested. Some cat walking around oh, with a God. tank top and coaching shorts. <laughs> with, with coaching shorts. With the gold ring that went over the gold nugget ring that went over two fingers. Sean, we might have to like put the the photo of the coaching shorts. <laughs> send, send, yes. send me a copy okay, of that. Gotcha. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Right. <laughs> and and then, you know, and for, but from that point, um, man, we pretty much been tied at the hip. And then uh I'm going through AMC movie theater years ago. Back in the day. Back, back in the day. Back in, the, well, back in the day. I just I moved to Atlanta. He comes up and says something to me. I turn. No, see, if you're going to tell the story. Oh, tell the story, well, right. Tell it right. Okay, these two knew each other from college. Right. I had seen them in college. They had seen me, but we didn't know each other. Right. Here we go fast forward, what, six, seven, eight years later? Right. Here in Atlanta. Right. Here in Atlanta. We all just happened to end up here in Atlanta by right. accident somehow. Right. By, by circumstance. Right. And then I kept in touch with Malcolm because me and Malcolm hooked up because we actually worked together. We worked together at AMC. Yeah. AMC mm -hmm. in Miami. Mm -hmm. Then I came here with AMC back in. No, I came here with Magic Johnson Theaters. Right. Yeah. Back yeah. in 96. Reunited with Malcolm. Right. And then that's the then then we'll then then, I yeah. introduced the, them again uh, to each other. And um, but you had told me about him, but we oh, had, yeah, we, we, had, we, had we, had, we had met. But how did we, me and Sean, first met? Because Sean just came up <laughs> and introduced himself <laughs> at the movie theater. Okay, when okay, he no. came with Magic Johnson. Uh, then. Uh, yeah, he came with the Magic Johnson. Then yeah, yeah. Okay, he went yeah. to Magic Johnson to say, "Hey, I'm, I'm Sean." Then he started getting free movie theater tickets wow. and stuff like that. <laughs> like he got that free wow. shit. Wow. Somehow, like, you know. <laughs> so I know I get some free shit. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but but, but uh, Sean, Sean was here in Atlanta. I was here in Atlanta, but you know, we didn't have cell phones and Facebook and Instagram and all no, that type yeah, of stuff. We had to call somebody. And so he was there. Yeah, right. He had to call somebody mama house. <laughs> the mama house. You know, because we all, we all had each other's mother's phone numbers. Yeah. So I saw Sean in the movie theater and I tapped him on the shoulder. He was with a date at the time, and he turned around, and I'm working at AMC Theaters. The managers used to wear suits. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I have my name tag on mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. So Sean turned around and saw me, picked me up, and like started like, yelling and screaming and shit in the motherfucking movie theater while I'm working. <laughs> was, the, was, was, was the movie playing? No, we was right was before it? before they entered their okay, movie. It was okay. right outside the entrance. What, of the movie. Well, here's the thing: 
what was the big movie that was out then? I could see that big that big display. Oh my God, is a crimson tie. Yes. Because I, I had. Y'all remember that shit? Yeah. yeah. I had it was the submarine. Big submarine. I, for the submarine. Uh, for the wow. submarine. I remember the movie. Yeah, the big time. Yeah. I had Somewhere. a model made, uh, a handmade model uh, that I uh, contracted out, made the submarine. Yep. And that was the movie playing mm-hmm. at the time. Crimson yeah, that time. was because that was for the. It was, it was yeah. like a promotion, promotion for the movie. Right? Yeah, yeah. Promotion for the yeah, movie. Yeah, you got to clarify that because people started thinking that he's a serious fucking submarine geek. <laughs> That's what everybody started to think that you had like created like a submarine at home. <laughs> So, but then after that, you know, we exchanged numbers and everything. And a few months later, you know, brought him to the house. He was selling cell phones at the time. Yep. This was the beginning of the cell phones. Oh my God. And then my cell phone bill was like $5,000 <laughs> because he did not tell me <laughs> that you had to call like after six and all this shit, all of the, all of the limits. Yeah, like, all exactly. the, 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 man, it was, it was hilarious. What time? Did you have to call and beg him? Please don't charge me all this. Well, no, no, I had to, no, they gave you small credits. It wasn't quite 5000 but it was okay. more than I expected. It was know? funny. One day, uh, Malcolm had his phone and I, he, it was locked. I said, man, give me a phone. Right, 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 I right. punched in the code. I was like, it's like how you do that. I mean, back then yeah, you knew yeah. all of those tricks, yeah. tricks of the trade and everything. But it, it was, uh, it was hilarious. He <laughs> said, "Let me get you." Out yeah, I was like, "Shoot, <laughs> uh, boy, please." And so, as it continued, time passed. We all went to a uh, a shoe modeling session at one of the local establishments. Yes. Um, and so we were there. It's a place where magicians hang out. <laughs> so what happened it's was magical. it's magical <laughs> and, it, and it ends in city yeah. so we <laughs> so we were we were in magic city mm. and um having lunch yeah yeah so anyway sean and i had been there a couple times mm-hmm. prior uh to hooking up with reg and the manager there was also from Bethune Cookman. Yes. Played baseball. Played baseball. baseball. Shout out to our boy Nick. Shout out to our boy Nick. And so when Nick walked up to say hello to us, he recognized Reggie. Oh my God. And see so Reggie. Nick. So Reggie saw us at Cookman, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but him and Nick were like two peas in a pod for the semester Reggie we was both, there. We were both friends. <laughs> two semesters. I made it two. Oh, oh you made two semesters. I made it two okay, you, yeah, you made it two semesters. So then everything just kind of went downhill for a little while after yeah, that because because yeah. we kind of no, had like celebrity status yeah. in the city for a minute. Though. Being yeah, being, y'all, sh- y'all sure did. <laughs> he said y'all sure did. What y'all, happened? what happened? Oh, okay. Uh, but anyway, yeah, yeah, because of Nick's relationship with Reg, yeah. and because our, <laughs> our relationship with uh, Nick, we um, we all would frequent there from time to time for drinks and things like that. Yeah. You know? I, I remember the DJ even had a name for us after a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean we I mean what did he call us? I don't remember. But uh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the DJ you you know what's bad when the DJ when we walk in the door, they go, oh, there they go again. There they go. <laughs> and he ain't gonna say the name he called us. We yeah, yeah, but we but we were there. That, <laughs> there was one night we were there. Uh-huh. We had so many drinks on the table. We when we were done, we just had to leave, and yeah. the, and the, yeah. and the yeah. two tables yeah. were full of full of drinks, full, full of, drinks. of drinks that we were unable to drink because it was just so many drinks. Because people just kept sending us more drinks and more drinks and more drinks. Yeah, that yeah. shit was raggedy, and I, and I don't condone this because I, when I think back to the younger me, right, 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 I'm like how the fuck did I even get home that night? Right, right, exactly. That shit is embarrassing. I don't even it know how I got right. home. Like we shouldn't have made it home that night. <laughs> he Ubered before Uber. He, he Ubered, yeah, in what that would have been 1998. <laughs> I, I, know, I told you I should have came up with that idea. That would have been a great idea. I should have came up with yeah. that idea. That would have changed our But yeah, but you know, and, and you know, uh, thank God we're we're here to tell a story. That's right. But you know right. that youth uh, was able to sustain us. That's right. Right. Along, time, yeah. along yeah. the way. So right. definitely we don't condone that. I mean, but, now yeah, but don't you do got, it. You got more. You got more than enough op- uh, options to get home. Back then, um, we just said, get my ass home. Yeah, just get my exactly. home. Exactly. Yeah, just please get home. So, we got so much liquor on the table. That yeah, yeah, that we did. Was, that was raggedy. That, that, was, that, raggedy. that, that was raggedy. We shouldn't do that anymore. But thank you, Nick, for showing us a good yeah, time. Yeah, thank you, Nick. Yeah. You know, I think you're in Alabama now. Is he in Alabama, I Sean? So. I think that's the last time we heard from 
They, uh, you know what? His son you know, plays. His son, son plays, plays for University of Miami. Miami. Yeah. Right. His son plays for UM. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So hey, that's how we, the, that's how the crew got together. That's how yeah. we just that's, started hanging. That's out. how Real we just started hard. hanging out. I mean, and it's been what bar, shit, go, twenty some years. Barbecues, now. just going to each other's houses yeah. for Final Fours, I March mean, Madness parties, and always, barbecues. Always, it, our, our boys are like cousins or brothers, man. Our boys oh my like God! Family. They've they, known I, each other. They, our boys don't know each other without each other. They've yeah. known each other about the same amount of time. You know, as old as they are. As old yeah, as, as old as they are. As old as they are. Yeah. You know, his is the oldest Malcolm, is, Malcolm is, is a year older. Right. Uh huh. Uh, Kyle and Dean will uh -huh. be seventeen Soon. this year. Yeah. Right. And they they don't know life without. Got each pictures. Other. Got pictures of them like this as babies. As babies doing all kinds of things together. And so, now, uh. Kyle and Dean are just starting to learn to drive. But now what was funny, Sean told us the other day, like Malcolm, my son, showed up to pick up Dean mm. to go over to get Kyle. So they hanging up, they driving around. And it shit. really hit me one day. Dean is playing basketball. Mm. Um, me and my wife were watching the game. Um, I turn around. There go Kyle and Malcolm. I'm like, what's up, y'all? <laughs> Oh, you're just coming to see Dean. Yeah, where, where your daddy at? <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I'm just sitting there looking. Then Dean gets done. He's like, hey, I'm about to go with them. Mm -hmm. And I had to just take a step back and just look. Right. Wow. These cats are driving up, around all together. Together. From snotty nose to like, you know. Young men. You acting like. I can't hug you no more or something like that. Or drop me off at the corner. And, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 yeah, no, 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 no. Don't embarrass me. Don't embarrass me. You, know? you telling me before we walk in the store, dad, no singing, no whistling. What? <laughs> so, but yeah, it, it was, but it's it's a beautiful thing just to see that, you know, um, these two, these three guys get together and it's it's she just, broke, it's just amazing. Just oh, yeah. See them becoming young men, mm -hmm. you know. Right. It's, it's, one it's one cool. still growing. He, for some reason, he ain't stopped. Yeah. He, one day he gonna stop. We'll oh, see. my God. That dude is so <laughs> tall. So. Yeah, man. It's a beautiful thing. And, and speaking of growth, man, I mean, I think I've been here to see you guys grow as well. Right, right, right. Yeah. Friends, I mean, because we were, we were. We, we know, were young, but we were still. We were in our twenties when 20s, we hooked up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We yeah. were in our twenties. Yeah, Damn, we were in our twenties. Our twenties. I still, oh. I still can't get that picture out of my mind when Reg made a ninety degree turn, running full speed. I have never seen that in my life. That's because I was what though. <laughs> no, that's because you was being pulled by your, <laughs> by your, my damn your big ass dog. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that that was funny too. That was funny. Yeah, I that forgot all fast, about that. That was the fastest I've ever ran in my life. Bro, you were going down. He ch he saw something, mm -hmm. and you were holding on. And then that cat cut to the right. The dog cut, cut to, to the, the right, right, and I cut to the right. <laughs> right into those bushes. And that's why I can't walk now, man. That's why I ain't got no fucking knees now. <laughs> I mean, but we got. We got just tons, tons of, stories. of stories, man. Tons it's just stories. life, just mm -hmm. life, man. Mm -hmm. You know. But yeah. as we grow, man, what what would you say? Like, there's this thing I saw on TV one time that was really interesting. That I always thought I wanted to pose that question to you guys because we don't live through so much with each other, mm -hmm. seeing each other's families grow and all that. But when you think back to the younger you and to the you you are now, there's a special. I think it's one of the news shows they were mm -hmm. having people. Write letters to the young self. Oh, right, right, yeah, right, right, yeah. right, right. I thought it was so interesting <laughs> that I'd love to hear what my boys thought about their younger self. Wow. Right. And I thought that'd be interesting, man. What would you say to your younger self? If you, you always say to have no, live life with no regrets. Right, right, right. And do right. things again differently. I would, so I wouldn't say there's any regrets. Definitely don't ever want to say that. But you do wish you had made some different decisions and been mm -hmm. a little bit wiser. I think if I had said something, one big thing to the younger Reg is that I would say be more disciplined. And my younger me, I was not disciplined at all. Meaning, I mean, mm -hmm. I would say, you know, I would say hang in there. You are going to mature. And guess what? You're going to have skill sets as you age and abilities from a business standpoint mm -hmm. and technology standpoint that you don't realize you have right now, you're going to tap into parts of yourself. So I would have said back then, 
be a bit more diligent, a bit more studious. Because I feel mm-hmm. like as I've aged and grown and had success in business and all that, I've had to really buckle down and work hard and grind. And I think if the younger Reggie was a little right. more disciplined, he probably wouldn't have had to grind <laughs> and, as damn hard as I had to and grind to the, sometimes. And to that point, I mean, I guess, you know, we could all say, uh, we could all throw the word discipline in there. Uh, to that point with me, what I would say to my um, younger self would would be what you what's brewing in your mind put it to action take do something with it put it to action yes. if you if you stumble and fall that's fine you mm-hmm. still have a, lo- a long way to you still got a long way to go to learn mm-hmm. put it to action and go hang in there don't be so quick to just say you know what forget it I'm doing something different. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, put it to action. Stay where you are for a minute. Handle business there and continue to grow. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you know, over the years, uh, we've all picked up some skill sets Mm -hmm. that are like, we'll sit up and be talking like, man, if I knew this now. Right, right, right. 20 years ago. I go back 20 years with this man, please. Well, so and and along those lines, like you said, just. Uh, you know, putting it in your mind and implementing the, the process and um, being disciplined. A combination with that is, is patience. You got to be more wow. patient. Yeah. I had zero patience. <laughs> oh, and, zero and, patience. You, and there, there, are, there are so many, Dude. all of us are, you know, not to say that you have to go to college, mm-hmm. but all of us are college educated. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I had already traveled the world before I went to college and things like that. So I knew a lot of things. Um, I had family members that you traveled the world. Yeah, I grew I I spent three years overseas as a, as a child, other countries. Oh, okay. 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 So I got culture that you'll never see. Okay. Even (laughs) if if you live to be a hundred, you won't have as much culture as me. I will. But, but, uh, (laughs) but anyway, the patience comes. That's that's what I'm talking about. That's 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 that shit right there. See, (laughs) The patient comes because, like you said, you have all this knowledge and we have gained additional skill sets. But being patient and waiting uh, just from investing, mm-hmm. investing God. money, yes. uh, being patient and listening to your elders. Yes. Um, when they tell you something back then, my You're grandfather right. tried to introduce me to golf. Mm. When I was like eight or nine years old. Wow. Yeah. Not that I'd be Tiger Woods. We'd have been right saying now. Tiger who? You yeah. right. You know, <laughs> not that I would have been Tiger Woods, but I, I, we we all play golf. Now. Yeah. Hey, so, you you swing better than you swing right now. Exactly. So you know, being patient, and I would tell myself, what you're chasing right now, mm-hmm. it's going to be there. Yeah, uh-huh. going nowhere. It's not. Go- it's not going anywhere. Right. It, it'll be there. It'll be there tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It'll be there next week. Yep. It'll be there next year. Yep. Because we've all chased right. different things in life. Yeah. And yeah. one of the most things we were chasing when we were young mm-hmm. or before you, you got married and things like that, we were chasing women. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that takes a lot of energy and time away from focus. something that you could focus so that's, on. That's what I would tell my son. Right. Right? I'm sure you tell your boys. Because yeah. yeah. guess what? Focus. Focus, man. And I, and, and I heard it. This is going to sound so women. Forgive me for saying this, but it's true. And I think it's, it goes both ways. It goes for the ladies too. You would tell, I would tell my young ladies this too. Mm-hmm. A person, a man never runs um, out of, uh, well, a man will run out of money mm-hmm. chasing women, but he'll never run out of women chasing money. Right. And I think that goes for ladies. Wow. Ladies, you exactly. chase money, you run, you chase a bunch of men, you that lady that's boy crazy, mm-hmm. you run around chasing the boys, you're going to run out of something. Yeah. But if you, Focus and mm-hmm. go after your goals and make that money. There's always guys out there hollering, ready for I tell, you. I tell, it goes both ways. It goes I tell both my ways. Son and this. I say, women aren't going anywhere. I say that to my son. Mm-hmm. Tell my daughter, men aren't going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. No. They're, they're, they'll be here. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, the quality of the person that you will attract when you have, when you when you know yourself exactly and successful is different. You'll attract better quality because you're better Mm -hmm. that's right right right. and and that's 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 what it boils down to Mm -hmm. you're some guys and some women you know just talking oh well i want this i want that Mm -hmm. well you want this in a guy or you want this in a woman Mm -hmm. 
But do you have it in you, though? Right. And if you don't have it, they don't see it. Mm -hmm. So you'll never get what you're trying to find Mm -hmm. because you don't have it. Because you don't have it. Yeah, you don't have it. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Discipline. You you got to testify. (laughs) (laughs) Discipline. Focus. Yes. Patience. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. You know, that that right there. And, and, And the other thing is, too. Because we all bounce things off of each other yeah. on mm-hmm. life and business mm-hmm. and things Sometimes like that. Sometimes y'all be talking and don't include me. So you you, you wearing a stink man shirt right see, now, Sean? See, yeah, yeah you that's included. True. That's true. Thank yeah, you. You stink man. My my my, my stick man shirt is is dirty. Right now, <laughs> you know, but you know, whatever your circle is or whoever yeah. your circle is. Sit down and just talk sometimes about life and ideas. Never be ashamed mm. to share those types of ideas with each other. Mm-hmm. And if they are true friends, they're not going to judge you. They're just going to say, "Well, no, nah, that's not such a good they're idea." Give you feedback. And that's not. And this is why. But I, this. I can't say this to that point. The reason why I respect these guys is because we challenge each other. Mm-hmm. We'll call each other to the carpet, mm-hmm. and guess what? At times, each one of us don't want to hear it. Yeah, we don't always want to hear. We don't always want to hear. Man, but I wouldn't have. I wouldn't want to have nobody different in my corner Mm -hmm. than you guys, because, like the term says, iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. Right. If you if you're with a if you're in a crew and you're the smartest one in the crew, you need to change your crew. You need to get a different crew. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. And all of us are so true. Are knowledgeable on different things. Different things. Yeah. As far as handsome wise. You know, I, I'm like the better looking. Yeah, yeah. But, we, um, we, we always looking yeah. up to Sean on that. Yeah. Because, you know. Because <laughs> Sean's been in movies. Yeah, I've been, been in, in movies. movies. He's been in yes. movies and he's modeled for people before. He's too, a so. thespian. Yeah, thespian. <laughs> he's a thespian. <laughs> well, you know, I didn't want to bring that up. But, you know, I have acted with Idris Elba and uh, Boris Kojo. So, um <sighs> Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Here we go. Here, Here we go. go. Um you know, an- another thing that I would say um, that I would say to younger self is don't be so damn superficial. Like, and this is this goes against, I think, being a 20 something. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, 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 it's hard. It's hard. Everything you do in life is superficial. But look beyond the surface layer of things, of relationships. Yep. Look beyond that thing and look into and ask yourself. What do you really like? What really makes you happy? Mm-hmm. Who, you know, try to actually get to know yourself a little bit. Right. I've gotten to know myself, honestly, over the last 25, 30 years, as, you know, going from a young man to a mature man. I feel like I've gotten to know myself by default or by accident, by trial and error. Mm-hmm. I wish I'd be, I had been more intentional about it mm-hmm. and introspective. Like, right. Because I think I've made some different choices in different places. But but the, but the thing the thing that I can say is that we're all still here right now. Yes. In lieu of our ups and downs, mm-hmm. because we have learned along along the way. Okay, not to do that again. Mm-hmm. Because there's mm-hmm. a lot of people that will do that again, mm-hmm. and whatever that again is, that it takes them out. Mm-hmm. Because instead of learning and saying, you know what, let me be better. Mm-hmm. It you know they you go, never for, stop they go for the surface. That's right. They go, they for, go the for the surface. Exactly. And, and it's and it's and it and we've no, learned over, over the years. It, it's it's so much deeper. Mm-hmm. It's so much deeper. You you're out in the ocean. You see an iceberg. You see the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. But the base of that iceberg Big is is a is an island. Big as fuck. Right. It's yeah. like a continent yeah. floating yeah. in the yeah. ocean. Mm-hmm. So you know. I, I can say that to be at, to be to to have made it to this point, mm-hmm. you know, uh, by the grace of God, um, because like you say, the times when we we were out late, can't even remember how we got home. But you got home. Somebody we got, got you home. There. And 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 we'll talk about it. You know, it's that not funny. Vodka. There's, a, there's a <laughs> that was that what <laughs> vodka. Yeah. Well, we was happy on the vodka back. Yeah, we, we was happy on the vodka. And there's vodka. a lot. There's a lot of people that didn't make it, but you know, right. yeah. but we did. And and granted, you know, that's something that we we won't do. Oh, never again. Because we're like, I don't care what it is. Like, no, nah, I ain't doing it. Now. Oh no, we have too much oh, yes. to lose. Oh, and yes. we had too much to lose then. We did. We didn't know it, but we didn't know it. Yeah. We were we were we were just naive mm-hmm. uh, in thinking that and, everything and would be then, okay. And, and the possible uh, hurt you could have. Brought on somebody else's family. Exactly. Cause an accident or right, something stupid. Right. But yeah. not only that, if you ain't here, 
Kids then ain't Kennedy here. not here. That's Kyle right. not here. Yeah, right. Right. Lil Malcolm not here. Yeah. It changes right. the whole. You know, it's like a ramification, not like the butterfly. It, exactly. Yeah. It, it, it <laughs> right. literally is. So that's a, a slept-on movie, by the way. Yeah, that is. That's it a is. Movie. Yeah. You know what? I want to look at that again because yeah. we we just yeah I got it on DVD if you want okay DVD <laughs> you I, don't even even watch have a, I don't even have a DVD player in my house you right take now. a flashlight now and it's been <laughs> reflected on right, the wall right, right. but um but, but yes. no yo, yo we have our inner circle of friends that we know but also don't be afraid to meet new people. Right. Yes. I mean, if you if you hear people talking, just introduce yourself and talk. Especially, and that's the best place to do that in the cigar. Oh my God! Oh, oh, cigar. Yeah. Hey, stick um, men and stick women. Yeah. Yeah. This is how we come together, right, right yeah, here. Exactly. You, you meet new people, mm -hmm. you learn new things, mm -hmm. yeah. and then you share the information mm -hmm. with with others. Right. You know, and um, so you have your inner circle, but then you also have other people around you that can help. You know, make your inner circle stronger. Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's what this, yeah, you know, that's what this life be, is all about. You, all, you yeah. should always be uh, thriving to to just be a better person. Learn learn a little something each and every day if you can. I mean, so last week, Sean, we were here here at Truly's, mm -hmm. and uh, see what I mean. We were uh, well. Where was I? No, you were here. Let me. Oh, can okay. I finish telling Truly's my story? Guys and off of Sandy Plains Road in Marietta. Can I finish telling my story? Tracy once again. There so go ahead, finish. Go ahead. So um, it. Sean reminded me, without him even knowing, he reminded me of something that happened to me a long time ago. Uh, he lit his cigar with one of the cedar sticks. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was in uh, Nicaragua and we was doing some work and everything. And we came across uh, this uh, cigar manufacturing place mm -hmm. and they were manufacturing cigars and we had finished working. And so I said, well, I want a fresh rolled cigar. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the guy, so the, the, the lady was rolling them right there and the guy, you know, said, gave me one. So I started smoking it and mm -hmm. it was brand new. Nicaragua grown and everything. So I started smoking it and everything. And then it was very, very strong. It was a potent smoke. Mm -hmm. And so the boss, the head thing, he showed up. Mm -hmm. He showed up. And when he showed up, he was like, you know, you shouldn't smoke that particular leaf freshly rolled because it's so strong, mm -hmm. you know. And so then we Unless you're trying to go to sleep. Right. <laughs> so he said, I have something for you. So he went in the building mm -hmm. and came out with one that had been aged. Same cigar mm -hmm. and been aged. And he had one of his workers light the cigar for me. Mm -hmm. She used a cedar stick. Mm -hmm. And you reminded me that of that story of mm -hmm. that trip when she lit that uh, for me. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just strike the match, cedar stick. It was a showcase. It was a performance mm -hmm. on how she did. Mm -hmm. And he explained to me with that particular cigar, he's like, you could probably smoke that without dropping the ash about five or six inches. Wow. He said, but you have to keep it parallel. Mm hmm and the way she burned it, it burned perfectly. So it started off perfect. It wasn't mm. sideways. You know how you yeah, cigars yeah, get sometimes. Yeah. And the way she did it with the cedar stick and everything, and she 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 lit it, and then she cut it again for me and gave it to me. Mm. And you, you smoke it, and you got to keep it parallel. And that reminded me of that trip. And I was there on business. And if I told you the whole story, then I have to kill you. But uh, <laughs> for a while, for a while I was there. Uh -huh. But um, so. It just reminded me mm. of, of of that when you did that because yeah. I, I hadn't lit with a cedar, cedar stick since then, and that was wow. That was 16, true, 17 years really. ago. And, for, and that's the true way to light a cigar. Yeah, that's how a lot of people are taught. That was sixteen or seventeen years ago when that mm. happened. When now uh, a little confession, because sometimes when in Rome, do as do as the Romans. And I would see people light with a cedar stick mm -hmm. and I started doing it. Mm -hmm. or they'll take a, a, a wooden match, light it and I would do it. I had no idea why mm -hmm. until recently somebody told me, well, you use a, a match, a wooden match or you use a cedar stick because it's not as hot as a, as a torch. Mm -hmm. Right. And that first burn mm -hmm. can, it can you know, it impacts the flavor. Right, 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 right. And so you have to smoke it a little longer mm -hmm. to get the full flavor. Exactly. Right. And so I was like, 
oh, I had no idea. But that's the thing that I enjoy about this lifestyle because you learn so much. I sit up and listen to guys talk about the different sticks. Oh man, I had this. Oh man, I had a a, a league of uh, provide. I'm like, okay, well, what's this? Well, what's what's up with that? And I'll yeah. ask them, well, what's what's the big deal? And and just over time, like we were talking earlier about our palates, our palates have changed. changed. Right, right. And yeah. and I can't, you know, I heard this term last night um, at Wise Ash. I can't smoke a two buck chuck anymore. What is a two buck chuck? Cigar? You don't you don't smoke black and miles. No more? <laughs> <laughs> Black and miles are not allowed in the cigar land. Um, <laughs> um, but to somebody's point, I heard this. I heard this cigar aficionado guy say this. He said, "Listen, if you like black and miles, smoke a black and mile. You ain't gonna really be able to smoke them in a lot of establishments because yeah, they don't want that. that. But that's if right. that's what you like, um, but it's just it's just learning of, about it because." I mean, it's 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 almost like a, a infinite sea of wisdom when it comes to cigars. And just like we were um, we were sitting with Akbar mm -hmm. at um, Fellowship, yep. the general manager of Fellowship. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Akbar. We're coming your way soon. Bro. Exactly. <laughs> Me and Reg got a stick and we smelled it. And he was like, no. Oh, yeah. Don't smell it. He like said, that, don't yeah. smell it. He's like, what are you smelling? You 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 smell from the, the from the tip of the from the tip. Mm -hmm. And then you, then you lie to you. Man, it, I was just, I was just blown away. I'm like, yeah. what? There's Sean, levels and rules of this thing. Wow. Sean, Sean, what about the time we sm first smoked Olive? Uh, uh, Olivia? Okay. Time, Olivia. time out right there. Hold that thought. We got, We're going to okay. talk about when we okay. first smoked Olive, and I'm going to reset. Oliva cigars, man. This is early in our cigar smoking. Early on, okay. early on, so, early on. I, um, and, and, Mal and Malcolm, you can chime in. So me and Malcolm are in the humidor. We just looking. We have no idea. Because we just what, smoke whatever, whenever, you know? Just no idea. So Malcolm looks at the Oliva. He said, oh, man, that looks nice. At that time, Oliva was using a canvas wrap. That's right. It was beautiful. It was and beautiful. It, right. it, was, it was crimson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it just stuck out. Malcolm said, man, let's, I said, man, I like those. It was a those. full body. A full, full body. Whew, we, didn't we, we didn't know that. We didn't know. We didn't know. <laughs> so we get it. We go. We went to the zoo. We're outside. Yeah, it was, was like zoo. an event. It yeah. was like, That's what it was. That's and y'all right. brought me one. At Grand Park. Grand Park. Grand Park. So oh, Grand Park. We're and it was, a, it was a summer. It was hot outside, yeah. too. Uh -huh. We're sipping on. I don't even know. What Remy BSOP? Probably so. Probably at that time, probably. Yeah, probably, yeah. And we're sitting on a on a bench and we're just smoking. Puffing, sipping, Chat. chatting. Yes. Literally. <laughs> literally. Literally. <laughs> so before we even knew that what that was. <laughs> man, we finished and we stood up. The, and the room, the, the 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 sky started moving. The past. <laughs> we're like this. What? And we're looking at the alcohol like well, we've been drinking this forever. Forever. And we're just like rocking back and forth, like, oh my God. Yeah. So, Oliva had us fucked up. Yeah. yeah. And, well, and, and, with and the uh, combination of Oliva and that Remy VSOP, whatever it was, we were high. We were high. We were high. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. I don't like this. He was like, "What did they put in these cigars?" <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what did they put in these cigars? That's exactly what we said. <laughs> and I think we did it one more time, just to make sure. And it fucked us up again. And it did it again. <laughs> it did it again. Right. It did again. But, but then we learned it was full body. Yeah. 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 You know, and we and we weren't mature smokers at, at the time. No, because no. this uh, was shit. That that had to be years ago. Oh. Man, this, much, this wasn't this. even when we weren't smoking cigars on the regular. We smoked them like every now and then. Right. Exactly. 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 Yeah. And uh, that, but that was, that was a, we, we, we all yeah, that bring that up. That was like 12, up. 13 years ago. We, we bring that up. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe longer than that. But I, I do have to say this, who got me smoking cigars. Uh, you guys got me smoking cigars from being out on the golf course. Yeah. Now. And my father got me into it. Right. Now, um, I did a little research. And when I say little research, it really went down to common sense. Mm -hmm. um, you know. My mom and dad, they smoked cigarettes and um, my mom passed when she was 59. Uh, 
and my dad passed later in life, uh, like when he was 81. Um, but they had been smoking for a while and then they had stopped, but pretty much the damage had been done. Yeah. So I said, oh, let me, let me look into this and let me check before I, I indulge. But then I, I went back and granted it's different for everybody. I looked at a couple of people and I'm, I'm going to be dating myself when I say this. I looked at George Burns and I looked at Groucho Marx mm. and those cats, Smoked. especially George Burns. Every time you saw him, he had a cigar. George Burns on a set in every move, whatever, he got a cigar in his hand. Mm -hmm. And he died when he was like 80,000 something years old. Mm -hmm. um, and then those Groucho Marx. I can't I can't remember. When we puff, we don't inhale. Exactly. And so then I just and I looked, I said, OK. And even to this day, I don't fiend for a stick. Mm -mm. I get one. I this day I go sometimes three, four days in a row without smoking. That, that's right, right. Now, right. I will miss it because it's a, it's a relaxing activity. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. right, but I don't need it. You know? Right. Yeah. It, there, there's there's never need. I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the 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 taste. I enjoy the stick. I enjoy you know all of whatever that particular stick that I'm smoking. It's an enjoyment mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. And that and that's 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 the big difference. And you know they. I guess the Surgeon General puts that out about everything just right. to, I guess, cover their their yeah, tail, yeah. Well, you know, whatever. but but just just the lifestyle and just looking at many people along the way, cats that are there was one there was one uh, story uh, about this guy. He was a hundred and something years old. It was like, well, what's the secret to your your longevity? Well, he said um, they did. He said he does little push up, sit ups, but he say I, I sip on me a nice whiskey and a, and a cigar. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this that's dude is over a hundred years old. Hey, right. that's how, that's how we made it through 2020. <laughs> right. exactly. Yeah. We smoked a lot. Yeah. We smoked yeah. A lot Cause you couldn't go to the lounges as mm -hmm. much. Right. You know? And speaking of like Reg just said how he liked to smoke for comfort and relaxation. Mm -hmm. He's going to need a lot of smoking and relaxation come tomorrow afternoon <laughs> when <laughs> McHome boy, Mahomes Woo. Yeah. kicks Brady's ass. And I'm okay. okay. And I'm gonna be I, and he gonna be there. I will I will be, be there. there. I'll, I'll be, be there. there. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm root, I'm I'm rooting for the University of Michigan former quarterback, Thank Tom you. Brady. Oh Thank shit. You. I think that because He's a Michigan of, boy for those who and, don't and, know. and and I'm a I'm a I'm a sports story fan. I love the story. Ten, this it, is ten Super Bowl. It may man. it may not be. I don't even see real. He don't need to win it. It may not yeah, be my, Tampa my needs team. Him to win it. <laughs> it may not be my team, but to be able to say, well, we witnessed a team play in the Super Bowl in their home stadium and win it. I'm just gonna say that part right there, right oh, now. Oh my god! Now, so. You know, Patrick Mahomes, you can't take nothing away from him. The dude has been in four NFC, AFC championships. Um, but what, since basically since he's came in the league. Three, you've been in three in a row. The first season, three? he didn't play. Okay, first season. Yeah, he, he, play. he came in at the end of the but season. But he's had time. more success or he's experienced more than most cats have been in well, the league. That's why they call him the baby goat. Yeah, they, oh, call they call him the baby goat. Brady's the goat. He's, he's the, the lamb. He's, he's, the the he's the lamb. He's the lamb. He's the lamb. He's the lamb. So, so I'm a Raider fan. Uh, so if Brady was not on Tampa Bay's team, I would probably pull for Tampa Bay tomorrow. <laughs> but because I'm still salty. About the, the fucking. The, the tuck, tuck rule. The tuck rule. Which started let because that, of Brady. Let that shit go, man. I, I won't. I won't let it go until he tells me it was a fumble. <laughs> if Brady calls me and tells me it was a fumble, then I will let it go. Well, you ain't never letting it go. I never gonna gonna, yeah, I'm never going to let it go. Man, <laughs> because that Super Bowl, well, not that Super Bowl, but when Tampa Bay met the Raiders in the Super Bowl, the Saturday, I hosted the Super Bowl that year, uh, but the Saturday before, I drove from Lithonia to Mableton. Mm -hmm. It's a straight shot on I-20, if you're familiar with Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And You painted your face? No, well, no, that was a different time. Oh, okay. But uh, <laughs> I went to Reggie's house, and I decorated his house with Raider balloons yeah, so, outside and everything. That was really fucked up. <laughs> and was that Mojo at the time or was that Apollo? That was on Mojo. That was Mojo. He had a dog. Mojo was barking in the house. 
And Reg is like, what the fuck you barking for? And so Reg comes out, and I got it on videotape, because when I drove off, I stopped up the street. You know where you used to live in Memphis. Yeah, Remember, you, you go up, yeah. So I, I went up to the top, and I looked down, and I was filmed. Reg runs out. And like is going from balloon to balloon, <laughs> taking them down, ripping them down. <laughs> shit. I think I think my daughter was crying yeah. and shit. It was, the dog was it, going the crazy. The dog was barking. <laughs> Kennedy was crying. It was a traumatic thing, man, for everybody. <laughs> and so the next day, we have the Super Bowl party. He comes to my house. Family is all there and everything. My family, his family, Shaw, other friends. And they whooped the shit out of the Raiders. 48 to 21. That score is etched. Okay. Into my mind. And uh, <laughs> so that's, you know, that's just some of the stuff we do amongst yeah. each other as friends. Just, well, just I, my other. team ain't never been to the Super Bowl. Yeah. But we do have two football championships back in 1951 and 1952. <laughs> do those the even De- count? That's the Detroit Lions. Do they, do they even you count? You know what? It is what it is. Okay, it is what it is. You know, we we oh, we we still here. We still in the league. We right? Still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we 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 do a lot of shit. Last thing I'm gonna say is I want to ask you guys' opinion because we we puff sip chat repeat a lot and we sip a lot. And the lounges we talked about it earlier, being an explosion. I'd love to know. We go to all the different lounges, and I have my picks and lounges I like and don't like and I'm not going to disparage anything but I, I think it's all about love and the culture and the lifestyle but you know I talked about there's different flavors to each lounge I, I don't think I ever talked about it with you guys what, what kind of lounges do you actually like I mean do you like the kind of the the party atmosphere the man cave atmosphere like we in the day you want the sports atmosphere what do you kind of gravitate to I, I like them all it all depends on my preference today Okay. Or tomorrow, whatever yeah, day yeah. when I wake up. Yeah, you, know, you don't know what you're in the mood yeah, for. Yeah, what, what I'm going to be in the mood for that day, how, how it's work, you know, if it's the weekend. Mm. Uh, or, uh, it depends on what it is. I, I, I enjoy, uh, shout out to the patio. Mm. I enjoy the patio. That's that's become um, one of my favorites. Yeah, so Keith, you know, George, Gary, everybody, Sade in the bar in the uh, humidor. Yeah. Right. Shout out to all y'all. Yeah, and other than that, you know, I, I like coming here because I can call you up. We don't live too far from one another. This is right around the corner from the house. And we just come in here, chill out, have a smoke, have a drink. Watch a little TV, talk a little shit, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. Truly's is like a home for a home away from a home. Away from home. We come yeah. here, and he and then we'll tell him we're coming. Sometimes we don't tell him all the time. See, see what I mean? <laughs> but uh, but then he'll come over too. He's got a little uh, further drive, but he'll come over and we'll just chat it up, talk about business ideas. We gave you mm-hmm. some uh, additional things the, the other day, mm-hmm. and we'll just um, we'll come up here, chat up, and then go yeah. spend an hour and a half and go. You know, we go to patio, we may spend three hours there because yeah, we're drinking and a whole lot more money. Yeah, too. a whole lot but, more but money. But it's fun, though. You but have a great fine. time because you know, they give you great service and everything. So it all depends yeah, yeah, on yeah. What, what, your what, what your flavor is for yeah. that day. And, yeah. and, and I have to say, um, you know, here in Atlanta, we're spoiled. We got oh, so many oh, We're from. spoiled and we can go, whatever mood we're in, we can find that in a cigar lounge. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to give a shout out uh, to Brian over there at Wise oh, Ash. Yeah. Because that's and, closer. And the other Brian too, BT over the Sear. And BT over the Sear. A Sede. A Sede. A Sede. A Sede. <laughs> um, because, you know, going to Wise Ash to me is like my man cave um, uh, away from home. And it's it's more of a, just a, like, you know, like a man cave setting. Right. And just good people, uh, uh, there's guys over there that I play golf with um, and everything. But when I want to get, you know, when I when I want to get a little a little extra, I can run go up the street to a sede, mm-hmm. uh, chill out with BT now. Um, and also I could go over to, you know, patio as well. Then around the corner or we've hit uh, several. I can go, I can go to Monticello. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can go to Monticello, Monticello. and uh, a little whole a little spot that's a hidden gym. You went to for the first time is three dollar cafe. Yeah, they dude. have a cigar they got, lounge they got on a the cigar lower room. level. Yeah, man, it's awesome. And and it's you awesome. know, so it's it's I I didn't realize until a few months ago when you was like Sean, there's like a hundred and forty cigar lounges in Metro Atlanta and counting. There's and several like, construction right And now. I'm like, wow. That. And then everybody knows. Literally, they call Atlanta the Black Mecca, but now Atlanta also has another uh, title. The, the cigar mecca because right. there is no metro area 
that I that I'm aware of that has in the this, United States that has, that this, has this this setup. And it's diverse. It's white, black, pink, purple. It doesn't matter. It's right. like we everybody comes men, men, women, and just young, like you, old. It's just everybody. like you said on your podcast that. They all support each other. They right. That's the the cigar friends, lounge right. owners go to other spots. Some mm-hmm. of them have lockers at other spots. That's right. And it's you know it's it's just amazing to be able you know to enjoy that. We can we can get our flavor. Would you know if we're in the mood to say yeah I don't mind hearing some music or hey I just want to chill and have some good conversation. Mm-hmm. I can you know we can we can all do that. We can do it everywhere. And, right. Right. Uh, and yeah. another hidden one. I don't mm-hmm. know if you've been there yet. Uh, cigar seller. Oh, in Kennesaw. Just well, opened. no, Reg told me about it's it, but I, I haven't been there yet. I'm trying to get y'all on the podcast. So cigar eventually I'm going to have Corona. everybody on the podcast. Check out an episode coming up soon with uh, Havana Lounge in Sandy Springs. I yep. did a great uh, thing with uh, Ade and D over there. So I'm looking forward to getting yep. back with them. Right. So, so many cigar lounges oh, to my choose from. Come to Metro Atlanta. That's the home of the stick, man. We're here. If it wasn't for COVID, I'd be traveling the country uh-huh. um, at a cigar lounge near you. But in the meantime... There's so many here in Atlanta, and so many of y'all are hitting me up saying, "Come bring the stick man there." I'm coming. It's a matter. Of, it's not a matter yeah. if. It's a matter of when. Yeah. We're gonna set it up. We're gonna puff sip, chat, repeat. So, man, fellas, I've been waiting so long. I've been talking to every fucking body else except my boys who started <laughs> the stick man with me. So, thank y'all for coming and chopping Glad it up with here. me. Glad to be here. Sipping on some Glen Livet. Single mark, 12 year double O. <laughs> there you go. And truly cigars. Shout out to Tracy once more. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Thank Tracy. You. We appreciate As it. As we puff, sip, chat, repeat. Don't forget. For, don't forget. See, I can't even fucking talk. Y'all got me. See. <laughs> don't forget to hit subscribe. Hit the like. And hit the little notification bell to let them know. So they let you know. Yes. When our next episode is coming out. So I'm Reggie. Reggie Kimball, a.k.a. Stickman number one. I'm here with Malcolm, Sean, with a stickman. Puff, sip, chat, repeat. We're out. Peace.